Welcome to the ISMM Level 5 Diploma. This module is Unit 501, Understanding and Developing Customer Accounts. And the learning outcome we're going to go through in this session is Learning Outcome 2. If you haven't yet been through Learning Outcome 1, by all means watch this one first, but do make sure that you've covered Learning Outcome 1 as well. As a little reminder in terms of uh, what the learning outcome is about and what the unit is about, it's about supporting knowledge, understanding and skills necessary to establish uh, and understand how customer organisations work, how they select suppliers, how they go about the buying decisions. Uh, when we're looking at actually uh, getting customers' business in, what we actually need to do is make sure we understand the customers really well. And the people who do more work in understanding their customers, how they operate, those are the people who can really win and build good, solid, long-term relationships with their clients. So, let's have a, a little refresh of all of the learning outcomes involved in this particular unit, Unit 501. Uh, number one, you've been through uh, understanding buying practices of customers. Number two, understanding customer support issues. How do we go about best supporting our customers? That's the one we're going to look at in this session. Uh, and then learning outcomes three, four, and five. Understanding your own organization's unique business value. Be able to prepare for customer procurement and the procurement processes that they have. And also being able to use the information gathered to plan to develop customer accounts. So, without further ado, let's have a look at a learning outcome two specifically. Breaking the learning outcome into a little bit more detail, the three areas that we're going to be looking at are, number one, evaluate how organisations develop product or service specifications for buying purposes. Number two, evaluate how the technical and resource support provided by your own organisation adds value or could add value for the customer. And number three, evaluate competitive practices relating to the decision-making process. Now, the approach that we're going to take on this because every business, uh, every industry, every segment is so different, is to look at some generic models to say, actually, how do we go about doing this? Rather than actually saying, this is how it is done in certain organisations. That's the work that you'll need to do uh, for the assignment, and I'll talk to you at the end of this session about what that assignment actually is. So, learning outcome two. The secret of account management is to provide the right service at the right level, at the right time, at the right price to your customer, basically to delight your customer. That means the customer will want to come back uh, and it means that the support is in place so that you can build long-term sustainable relationships with your customer. This is about analysing, which doesn't sound the sexiest part, but this is about analysing how your customer organisation actually works and those are the models that we're going to have a look at. The key model is going to be Porter's value chain, which is uh, a, one of Porter's uh, many models um, to do with looking at customers, all of which have uh, lots of different value. We're going to look at one uh, with learning outcome three as well. Uh, but this is the value chain. And what the value chain does is it actually breaks down the structure of how uh, a customer organisation actually delivers their own value, their own margin, their own profitability into the business. So that you can then start to work out which elements of the customer's business you really need to analyse. So you can look at what is driving costs, what is driving operational decision making in that business and therefore by using that understanding later you can actually get to the point of saying well actually this is how it is going to work. So let's have a look at Porter's value chain. It's a set of different activities split into the primary activities along the bottom and the support activities across the top that drive the margin, that drive the profitability of your customer organisation. So the primary activities that you may need to look at, and this will obviously uh, depend highly on your particular sector uh, and the industry or industries in which you operate, your primary activities may well be, number one, the inbound logistics. That's all about how do your customers actually get stuff in, in the first place. There can be huge amounts of saving in the value chain if you can work with your customers in a way that delivers great inbound logistics support. And that might be as simple as how do we change packaging, how do we change uh, the sizes of cartons, of pallets, the shape of pallets, the stability of pallets and that sort of thing. Uh, but can also be uh, as simple as changing codes on different SKUs and all of that sort of stuff. There's value to be sought in looking at the inbound logistics of your customer. The operations part, what is the operational structure 
Uh, and how do they, once they get the product or the service in, how do they actually go about uh, getting it before they move into outbound logistics? What do they do with it? Is it easy to handle and where is the value uh, in handling that particular product? Outbound logistics, very similar to inbound logistics. How simple and easy is it? Take an example of uh, a supermarket like an Aldi or a Lidl or something like that. Think about their inbound logistics versus their outbound logistics from a store point of view because obviously we need to look at this right across the business because they will have uh, their distribution system as well as individual stores. At this point, you're actually thinking about, well, if something arrives uh, in a certain shape cardboard box and they can then use that cardboard box to put it straight on the shelves or straight in the, in the cages on the floor, it's really, really simple for them. And that can actually drive an awful lot of value into their business. And that's where we can help our customers drive value and therefore help drive the relationship that we have with them. Marketing and sales, a uh, fairly obvious one uh, that uh, if you're doing this program, you should be relatively uh, familiar given it's an ISMM program. But if you can help your customers' marketing and sales approach through the use of your products and services, so much the better. You're going to help build that long-term relationship. And also, if you understand what they are trying to drive from a marketing and sales point of view, it can help with both the positioning of your products and services, but also what products and services do you offer them. And maybe there's work for uh, development or even just tweaking uh, of your existing products and services to fit in with what your customers are looking for. And then finally, service. Their service and how do you support their service? How easy do you make it for them? Think about it really simply. If you've got a product that is causing their customers an awful lot of problems, that's not going to be helping their value chain. And if we as the supplier into a customer organisation don't help with their value chain, we're not going to be able to have the best relationship that we have. Somebody else can come in and, and steal that relationship from us. So those are the primary activities along the bottom of Porter's value chain. The other area to look at um, in a detail is what are the support activities that do that? It seems like they're a little bit disconnected from all of this. And uh, to be fair, in some customer organisations, they're, they're overly disconnected. But there can be potential in these areas as well. Think about the infrastructure of the firm, the way that their human resources work, their technology department, because that will impact on all of these. Uh, and also, obviously, their procurement processes and their procurement systems. Those support activities, driving and supporting the primary activities below, are other areas where you think, actually, we need to understand how our products, our services, and our approach to business are either helping or hindering our customer organisation. The more it's helping rather than hindering, the better it's going to be. So, as I mentioned, this is Porter's value chain, and it was developed in 1985 by Michael Porter uh, in his book, Competitive Advantage. Your organisation will also have a value chain as well. And if you can understand your organisation's value chain, your customer's value chain as well, it will really help you in driving the relationship with your customer, and, and most importantly, uh, being able to support the customer. And that is what this unit is all about. So let's have a look at the sort of questions that you should be asking yourself. Think about the following. How was a particular product or service developed? Was it developed with the customer in mind? Was it even developed for a specific customer? And if it was, how long ago was that developed? And have things changed over time? Because actually, if we develop things that are suitable and useful for us, they may not be suitable and useful for our customers. So we need to really think about, are we doing it in the best way for our customer's value chain as well as for our value chain? Uh, another area to look at, how much customer input was involved in the development? Wouldn't it be great if you could actually go and ask the customer what it was like? Um, I had an example many years ago where I completely failed in this particular approach. Um, I was working for a large nappy manufacturing organisation at the time. And in the run-up to Mother's Day, um, I actually decided that what we should do is put uh, disposable cameras strapped to the pack of nappies because for this particular customer, it would have worked beautifully. Take photographs of your baby in a nappy, preferably a clean, beautiful one of ours, um, and it was just a nice little promotional piece of activity years and years ago on Mother's Day. 
I failed to go and get customer input into this. And the really simple thing was actually from the customer's value chain point of view, the side of the packaging that we put the camera on simply did not work. It made the pallets really unstable and it disrupted their inbound logistics. They were actually quite angry with me, despite the fact I'd done this piece of work specifically to drive value into their organisation. I'd almost done the opposite because I hadn't looked for customer input. Another area to look at, what technical and support resources are there? So how do you actually go about <coughs> supporting your product and providing technical support for your product once it is in the customer's hands? Are you able to offer that level of customer service? And if not, how is your customer going to feel about it? How do all of these things add value to the customer? Which bit are they going to benefit from? Because here's the thing. Actually, one of the uh, challenges of this is you actually might not be benefiting your direct contact in the customer. So some of the changes that you might make that drive value into the value chain of the customer might not directly influence or uh, be part of the KPIs of your buyer, the person that you're talking to. So you need to make sure that those are recognised across the organisation and preferably by the buyer as well, so that you can extract the value from the value that you've put into your customer's value chain. If you can quantify it and give them numbers about it, fantastic. Because then you can show them as part of the purchase decision that they're making what you are valuing your input as and how you are actually delivering value into their organisation. And they'll appreciate that. You also need to look at your competitors. What are your competitors doing which is similar to you? And what are your competitors doing that is different to you in the marketplace? And which bits of those can you nick so that you can add more value to the customer? And if you can pick things from lots of different competitors and become the best of the pile, then you will become the preferred supplier, uh, which is a phrase you'll have heard of in learning outcome one. If you can become a preferred supplier, you have a better, stronger, more powerful, more sustainable relationship with your customer. So, Let's finish off this section by having a look at the uh, actual task that you need to do. Um, the secret of account management is to provide the right service at the right price to the customer. So, choose one of your own products or services, one of the offerings that you have out there in the marketplace, and answer the following questions. Number one, how was that product or service developed and why? How much customer input was involved? What was the technical and support resources for the product? How can they add value to the customer? How do you quantify it? And what is the quantity of that? What is the value of that? And what do your competitors do? So for all of those questions that we've been through, your uh, assignment, your task for this particular learning outcome uh, is to answer the following questions. Thank you very much for this. Uh, good luck with the task and we'll see you on learning outcome three.